change. So how can we increase disk life? There are really only two ways. Either we improve the materials and the process, uh, or we increase the size of the disk. So there's more material to wear away. This is how 15 and a half inch cutters evolved into 17 inch cutters, and how 19 inch cutters evolved into 20 inch cutters, simply to get more wear material. Wouldn't change again. So development is not an easy process, and there are many difficulties encountered. It simply takes a long time to develop and test new materials. It's necessary to test on operating machines, and it comes as no surprise to many of you. The contractors really don't want to test, they want to make tunnel. Finally, we have to convince our boss that spending the money chasing a new idea is a worthwhile pursuit. Head and change. So our latest development project is called Fast Ton, Future Advanced Steel Technology for Tunneling. This is a collaborative effort between uh, Robbins and several parties. It's just getting started. The main part players are, uh, of course, us, so the, the TBO manufacturer. DASF is involved. Uh, they're a producer of chemicals for the underground industry. The Norwegian Rail Administration, which is a user of tunnels. Scanna Steel, a uh, wear resistant steel producer. BMS Steel, a producer of specialty cast steels. Go ahead and change. And two research partners, Syntef, a Norwegian company that specializes in construction materials and chemistry, and the NTNU, which is the Science and Technology University in Trondheim, Norway, specializing in engineering and geology. One change. The main goal is to increase cutter life by reducing wear and failure. There will be several different approaches investigated, from the development of new alloys to the investigation and tests of special cast steels. We're going to be experimenting with anti wear additives and reduce abrasion to the cutters. And finally, we're working to improve the accuracy of cutter wear prediction. We'll do this by improving our understanding of the interaction between the rock, the cutter, and the anti abrasive additives. We'll use advanced modeling and experimentation techniques. As I said, fast time has just gotten underway, and we hope to have some promising results soon. Let's move to the next one, which is uh, another poll. This time we want to know what your challenges are operating hard rock tunnel machines. Hi, Steve, and we have another question. Uh, what drives cutter research and development at Robin? Well, two things drive the, uh, the research and development. First of all, uh, we, we have our own internal goals, and these are ideas that are, that are put forth by employees. Uh, secondly, are the, some R&D is driven by requests from our customers. Uh, probably 50-50, but we rely very heavily on, on uh, our engineering talent here to assist. Our, our department is, uh, the cutter department is not so big, so we rely very heavily on, on uh, the rest of the engineering department. Okay, we've got the results. Uh, maximizing reading life, 24% of you, almost half wear and hard or abrasive ground. 14% planning and executing, 16% cutter damage. So most everybody is uh, interested in, in the challenges of wear and hard or abrasive rock. Anyway, let's move on to, uh, to the next slide. Another aspect of cutters we're working on is their ability to operate 
under high pressure in EPV or, or slurry applications. The problem we see is that conventional cutter seals are only good for about three atmospheres of pressure. Above that, seals begin to have problems with high sliding friction and <coughs> failure. Ladder or piston type common pressure compensators have limited effectiveness in EPV applications because they plug up with fine material in service. And they, they handle increasing pressure fairly well, but when the pressure decreases and the piston or the ladder needs to move back out, they, they sometimes tend not to be able to do that because they're plugged up with this fine material. Let's go ahead and change. So we're approaching the sealing problem through two fronts. First, we're working with seal manufacturers to develop a seal that has both low sliding friction and high pressure differential capability. And secondly, we're working on the design of a foul proof compensator, which is proving to be more difficult than that sounds. Go ahead and slide, change the slide. External pressure causes the seal faces to be pressed together, as you can see the diagram. Causing, this causes high friction, high wear, and uh, ultimately failure on the metal to metal seal surfaces. Change the slide again, and you see uh, internal pressure. This could be caused when, uh, when you have a lot of friction in the seals, as I mentioned before, it can keep the oil up, and you end up with high, high pressure on the inside. One way to solve this problem is to use a pressure relief valve. But this just introduces another failure point where contamination can enter the cutter. So we're better off not to have a relief valve if possible. Go ahead and change. This is the pressure vessel testing facility we use for simulating the conditions encountered in ETD or slurry chamber. We can put a cutter in here and we can rotate it under high pressure and we can put water sand, gravel inside, and do our best to simulate real-world conditions. And pressure can be monitored both inside and outside the cutter in real time, so we can see when, when, uh, when a failure occurs. Go ahead and change the slide. This is the cutaway view. Of the test vessel shows how the cutter is rotated under test with the, uh, with the electric motor. And let's move uh, to the next slide. Here we have another poll. Uh, once this poll is completed, we're going to let Aaron take over and talk about real-time cutter monitoring and then changing cutters and pressurized machines without the need for hyperbaric intervention. So what are the biggest challenges when operating a soft ground? PPM challenges uh, with your cutting tools, monitoring the wear, operating in mixed round conditions, planning your cutter changes, and maximizing tool life. And um, Steve, we have our next question. How are EPB disc cutters different from hard rock disc cutters? At the present time, there's not a lot of difference between them. Uh, physically, there's not much difference. Although when, when we build the EPD cutter, we set the rolling torque as low as possible. And this is one of the reasons we're, we're working on development of a different sealing system for EPD cutters so we can get the rolling torque as low as possible. The other difference, of course, is uh, we sometimes use pressure compensation devices in, in the cutters. So we have our results, uh, the most important challenge to everybody, 66% uh, is, is operating in mixed ground conditions, 19% uh, planning cutter changes, 9% monitoring tool wear, and 7% maximizing tool life. So operating in mixed ground conditions is, uh, is clearly a challenge, and I think we all recognize that. Anyway, with that poll, we're going to turn this over to Aaron. I hope he has uh, better luck changing the slides. It's a little disconcerting when you can't see what you're talking about. Go for it, Aaron. I'm having some delays, too, but uh, I'm going to try to make it work. First of all, thank you for joining us for this web event. Um, I've been a 
cutter engineer here at Robbins for four years. And today I'd like to talk about remote cutter monitoring and atmospheric cutter changes. Uh, when, a, when a disc cutter is removed from a machine before reaching its, its wear limit, uh, it's usually because of some kind of mechanical failure. Um, if I'm on the right slide, uh, there's a couple examples of mechanical failure. One is a failed cutter bearing on the left, and on the right, it's showing a, a non competing cutter. Aaron, this is Harv. I'm going to go ahead and, and take control so I can advance the slides for you. Just give me a verbal cue. Um, I'm ready to go to slide 41. Okay. The intention of remote cutter monitoring is to um, monitor how well the cutters are working in real time and give an operator uh, an indication if there's any kinds of problems going on with the cutters. Um, the data is displayed in the operator's cabin in real time and they can make adjustments to the machine parameters on the fly or go inspect cutters if there's any indication of a problem. Okay, next slide. The cutter monitoring system consists of a, of a network of instrumentation packages installed on each cutter. Uh, each cutter disk gets its own distinct uh, instrumentation package and the overall system uh, operational parameters of each cutter can be can be uh, monitored in real time. There is a wireless package installed on the cutter housing that detects the operation of the of each individual cutter. It programs it, it's programmed to send the data wirelessly to a central hub where it's collected and then relayed to the operator's cabin. Okay, next slide please. The instrumentation package on the cutter housing consists of a protective sleeve in, in closing the electronic packages. There is a processor which has the downloaded data for how to operate. There is a transceiver that, de that encodes the data for transmission over a antenna. There is a magnetic switch used to measure the cutter RPM. There is a accelerometer for measuring the overall vibration. There is a temperature sensor, which will help identify any anomalous conditions. A non-rotating cutter would quickly get hot. And these instrumentation packages are powered by batteries. It can either be an alkaline battery or lithium. Lithium has a longer life. And as I mentioned before, it has a protective protective sleep. Okay, next slide, please. The primary data collected by the instrumentation system is cutter RPM and temperature, and those are the main uh, data displayed to the operator. There's also, as I mentioned, a accelerometer which measures overall cutter vibration. Um, to monitor the, the level of the batteries, if there's also a battery voltage signal sent and an overall system health indicator for each sensor. If there's any kind of electronics fault, it'll, it'll play to the operator so they know they need to check the instrument. Next slide, please. The cutter RPM is measured by installing a magnet in the hub, which is detected by the magnetic switch in the sensors. It times the interval between magnetic pulses, and from that it can detect a cutter RPM. And by knowing the RPM and the position of the cutter in the cutter head, the disc ring diameter can be measured, so you can have an indication of ring wear and know when it might be getting time to replace the cutter with a new cutter. Next slide, please. The temperature of the cutter and its surrounding environment is measured using an RTD. There is there's an accelerometer with, with two axes of 
measurement and 